We are so grateful to have Johnny Moore with us uh, as our co-host this week. We thought it'd be appropriate, as we love to do with co-hosts that come and spend a week with us, to begin the week and time together just getting caught up on what's going on in their lives as well as find out more behind the scenes as to what they're up to and their families. And Johnny, uh, the last time we saw you here, we were telling folks about defying ISIS and uh, lots of people got a hold of this book. And even after you left, ISIS continued to make headlines. And are, are you continuing to speak and uh, the books continue to sell well, I guess? Yeah, I mean, I, I wish the book was totally irrelevant now. I, I wish this threat was over. Go away. I, I wish the Christian persecution had ended, but it hasn't. It's escalating every well, day. Well, last month I was with John Hagee down in San Antonio, and it's been our offer all this month, and uh, he was talking about the three heavens, and he talked about the second heaven being the arena of the demonic and the dark and the devilish and the, the evil supernatural aspects of things. And in that, he came all the way from, you know, uh, Cain killing Abel and that evil of, of killing and murder all the way to present day in ISIS. And it is, there, it, there is such a darkness to this. I mean, this is the 21st century. Like, we, we have people beheading people for their faith alone. We have children being tortured. We have had little girls being put on slave markets. You know, we, we talked last time I was here. I mean, I have the price list of the slave market where it says a, a one to nine year old Christian or Yazidi girl for a price about just under $200. I mean, this is an awful thing that's happening. It's happening in our time. And, and I, I, you know, when, when I think about this crisis, I, I think about the Holocaust, you know, and, and I think, had I been alive during the Holocaust, would I have been a part of the solution or a part of the problem? Not that I would have been killing people, but I would have been part of the problem by my silence, right? right? And I, I just don't want to be quiet. And so I'm still talking up, and I appreciate all Huntley Street has done to raise the oh, issue. Well. It's, it's first century persecution in the 21st century, and we've got to do more about it. Well, you're helping us by letting our audience know what's going on, and uh, our audiences both in Canada and the United States, and, and we're grateful. By the way, we're on now on uh, TCT. Uh, out of Illinois in uh, some 25 million U.S. homes. This is our first month with them, and we want to say hello to, to you folks. Thanks for getting to know us at 100 Huntley Street and tell your friends. Uh, Johnny, let's, thanks for the book. Thanks for everything you're doing. Let's talk about your life. Let's go back to uh, where you're from, how did, how, did, how did it get started? Because you are a young man, but you are accomplishing a lot. In, in your life at this young age. So where are you from originally? Well, I, you know, I moved to Virginia in high school because uh, my parents had divorced and one day my mom went to the mail and she had a scholarship in the mail from Liberty University. And so off we moved on faith to Virginia. We, we in fact left South Carolina the day they cut our lights off at our house because we couldn't pay the bill. And we got to Virginia, we lived in a basement apartment with two bedrooms. Mom slept on the couch so my sister and I could have bedrooms. So Johnny, you had a tough, tough life before, before this notoriety and busy schedule. Yeah, I mean, God, God had his hand on my life though from the very beginning and yeah. because it was there that I met the founder of Liberty University who later made me a campus pastor. And so I was 18 years old, I was the campus pastor of Liberty University, the largest Christian university in the yeah. world. Yeah. And we kept my age a secret. Because, I mean, it's, it's kind of a crazy which, thing. Which, so, would be, which would be kind of the uh, style, the humorous style of the founder. Of yeah, the no, no, for sure uh, it was. Mr. And Jerry. Yeah, and, <laughs> and, and, and by the way, he wasn't taking a big risk. I mean, he no. gave me a church service to speak at that had failed. It had 100 people attending it in this gigantic university. But, uh -huh. but you know, it, it was like a, an idea. Take a youth pastor who's like the age of the youth, you know, in college, a college pastor, the age of the college students. And in a year, the church had well, like 2,000. Yeah, and, and through his history, because I... I go back to the uh, 1980 with him, uh, Jerry Falwell, and uh, he always had an eye for young talent. He, he knew these young, he met people, there were folks like you before and folks after you after that he was able to really give a great a great break to and give them great, great exposure. He, belie he believed in young people. He sure and, did. And, and by the way, we should too. Yeah, you know, we should yeah. look out across the body of Christ and find those future leaders. I mean, so you start out as a campus chaplain or speaking and uh, yeah. you're, you're 18 and then there is this surge of responsibility. You become a vice president? Yeah, and a senior vice president at, at a time where the university grew from maybe 25,000 students to 110,000 students. It's amazing. Was running all the public and media relations and you know right hand of the of the president and teaching religion courses and campus pastor and running the largest weekly gathering of Christian students. And that was just on Monday. <laughs> well and it, it was all because one guy believed in me. I yeah. mean that, that's what it was. The power it was of that. One yeah. guy saw a young person 
And, and, and by the way, he didn't just throw me in the deep end. He was with me every step yeah. of the way, and other mentors came in my life. And, and it's true today, John. I mean, I have more friends that are in their 60s and 70s yeah. than I do my age. Yeah. You know, because this is the body of Christ. You know, we, we have the wisdom of the old and the zeal of the young, and that's how we change the world. And we exchange those as we grow in varying degrees. So you uh, find yourself at Liberty. Uh, you're also getting a university education while you're there. Get a degree in what? At religion, so I have two degrees religion. in religion. All right, yeah. so you, do you go on and stay at the seminary there and, and, and get a master's degree? At, yeah, uh, yeah. Okay. I, I did it on the nights and weekends. But the, but yep. the truth is I did it because uh, someone had left that was teaching the Introduction to Christian Life course for all the undergraduate students. They wanted me to teach the course, but I didn't have the qualifications. So I very, very quickly, speedily did my master's degree. You know, maybe I'm not supposed to say that. But you know, I, I just believe that you know, if, if you're supposed to do something, you get prepared for it, you do it quickly. So you're not opposed to a fast track, that's for sure. No, I mean, no. You, I mean, you, You've made we that gotta happen. move. I mean, this world yeah. is like changing. This is a it's a perilous time. It's also a time of great opportunity. You could have stayed at Liberty, and the future was bright there. And uh, by no means is Liberty University suffering or struggling. It's it's at its height of uh, popularity and respect, and uh, it's just amazing what's happening there. I watched uh, Jeb Bush speak there at the commencement, and some I said thirty five thousand I think there to hear him speak for that graduation. But you then find yourselves going into the world from the world of education and ministry. You find yourselves now, I guess, being recruited by Mark and Roma Downey to come and help them in their world of media. These are the folks that made uh, the uh, very popular series, the, the, the Bible, a few years ago. Uh, and uh, AD that just AD that just finished, finished on, here. on NBC. Uh, um, how did that take place? This is intriguing. You know, I was. Uh, it's kind of an interesting story. We were in a meeting together in Amman, Jordan. Uh -huh. So the king, because he was concerned about Christians in the Middle East, the Muslim king of Jordan was concerned about the persecution of Christians, yeah. and he called together this global meeting. Yeah. And I was in the meeting, and Mark and Roma were in the meeting, and Rick Warren was in the meeting, and okay. three Catholic cardinals and five Orthodox patriarchs. Right. And, and we met around a, a common cause that we cared about. And then a little later on, I invited them to come speak at Liberty, and I spoke to 10,000 students in the arena, and then out of the blue, my cell phone rings one day, and it's, and it's Mark. And Mark mm -hmm. asked me if I'd consider moving to Hollywood and joining their team and working on faith content and, and helping run their office. And, and you made that so move when? I made it about a year ago. All yeah. right. Still fresh in the job, but now it's getting where, I mean, you're keeping an amazing schedule. Tell us, though, about the most important aspects of your life outside of your faith, and that would be your family. Yeah, yeah. No, this is the best part of life, right? I, I have a beautiful, amazing, incredible wife. Her name is Andrea. Okay. Uh, she's from Brazil. We met at Liberty. There she is. Uh, yeah, and in fact, yeah, isn't she beautiful? Oh, yeah. And oh, actually, she was a senior in college, and I was the campus pastor. And so this is a little scandalous. Like, you know, we, we dated an hour away from campus every time. And then Edward <laughs> and Catherine, my two-year-old and my eight-month-old, and, and we're just, we're loving life. I mean, every Saturday morning, Edward and I go out for a waffle. It's like a tradition you know, if I'm in town we do yeah, it. Don't lose that. Yeah. No, no, it's a, it's, a, it's a great, great time of our they lives. They grow up so very, very fast. And, they don't uh, sleep much though. No, but you know what, you've got a lot of energy and, uh, and, and you're, you're doing okay and you seem to, you, you seem to have it going, going right and well. You've finished how many books now? Uh, four. Four books. Uh, anything that we know after Defying ISIS, have you determined what the next book will be or could you say? Yeah, I, I, I can't really say, but, but I can tell you that um, I'm not going to use my voice to just do uh, simple things. I believe that this is the first moment in Christian history where we can see the completion of the Great Commission. I think the enemy realized it before the church did. Yeah. And so we see the best of times and the worst of times, the greatest evil and the greatest opportunity. And I want to see the world changed. Well, we are so glad that part of your uh, uh, schedule has allowed you to come and spend a week with us. It's and great we're to very, be very grateful. And uh, 100 Huntley Street has grown to love and appreciate you. And uh, it's going to be fun to have you all week long. 